When we moved into our house about 10 years ago, there was wallpaper in almost every room. I'd spent a long time peeling all the wallpaper off, especially in the bedrooms, hours upon hours. I had the time, so I did it. It was my project. And then eventually we painted. And then here in the kitchen, I just covered this one wall here with my own wallpaper that I had purchased from Amazon. It's like a faux texture style wallpaper. This had been up for quite a while and there was a little corner of a piece of the wallpaper that was had come off of the wall and every time I walked by it I would say I need to glue that back on and then one day I just decided to peel it off I'm like let's start over try something different I had a slight vision for what I wanted to put here but I wasn't exactly sure so I was really just making it up as I went along but of course I knew the first step was to peel all this wallpaper off. I thought this would be an easy project because this hasn't been on for that long, but I had forgotten that I hadn't peeled off all of the original wallpaper and I had just covered it with this. So once I got under here, I realized there were sections that had the original wallpaper. So it took a little bit longer than I expected, but this is me updating this wall. And if you're interested in the process and the outcome, then I hope you keep watching. Okay, so just giving a quick explanation of what I did here. This is a board and batten wall. This is the third board and batten wall I put up in my house and I'm pretty sure this is the last one. So it's black on the bottom, white on the top. I didn't use any special paint. This is literally what I used. For the bottom, I just used these Rust-Oleum paints. This one is semi-gloss black and this one is flat black. I mixed them together and painted this here. Then I cut the boards down. As you saw, I used my level to get this board here completely level. And then I painted, I pre-painted them. So when I put them up, they weren't fully dry. So I just dabbed some more paint before, um, after I nailed them on with the nailer. And then I filled in those little holes with this dry dex spackle spackling heavyweight spackling and then just went over those little spots with the black paint and that's this is where we are right now so this is i painted this white as like a primer and i just used this rust-oleum semi-gloss white so i didn't ask for any customized colors or anything i just literally used what was on the shelf now what i'm going to do for this top part above the board and batten is i'm going to add some mirrors I purchased four mirrors, four full length mirrors from Target. They were labeled as $7, but when I got to the register, they ended up being $5 each. 
definitely a steal there. And those mirrors are 12 by 48. I think I'm gonna try to cut some of the mirror. And if I'm successful at that, I will include that in this video. I might just include it anyway, just so you can see the attempt. And even if it doesn't work out, I did a little research and I see that it can be done. I just wanna know if I can do it, so we'll see. Um, but I am gonna just hang some mirrors up here. I'm using command strips. Now the mirrors are not heavy at all, but if the command strips that I purchased are the heavy duty ones. So if I use two, it, will, it says it will hold 10 pounds. If I use four, it will hold 20 pounds. I'm gonna use four on the full length mirrors, even though they're probably like five or six pounds each, I don't know, but they're very light. But just for security purposes, I'm putting Four of them on and then for the um, smaller ones I ordered 12 by 12 mirrors from Amazon the box came today and I haven't looked at them so I have eight of those eight 12 by 12 mirrors they come with glue and some other little sticky pads to put them up but it says that they're permanent I don't want mine to be permanent in case they get cracked because this is a high traffic area and I know I'm taking a chance with that but I I want to do it anyway so if I'm if I need to replace anything I need to be able to take it off the wall easily so I'm going to use command strips for those as well and I'm probably just going to use one and cut it in half and put one on either side of the mirror and I'm just going to place those up so you'll see the process of that and we're just going to go from there plans okay so I took all the mirrors down because of course my projects can't just be simple they have to be complex for some reason but anyway I uh, got some cardboard because we've been ordering stuff from Amazon and all over the place like we usually do so we have plenty of cardboard so I just lined this up I measured out 90 and a half inches this way and 45 and a quarter inches this way this is the exact measurement of the wall i'm gonna lay out the mirrors on here in the way that i want them to be and then i'm gonna put wooden a cube a wooden cubed dowel kind of thing in between each mirror because i did not like how the images when the mirrors are all touching the images are reflecting obviously in different ways i did not anticipate that necessarily although I thought it might do a little something but I didn't think it would be as bad as it was and I did not like it I still don't mind but I don't want them to be touching so now I have these wooden pieces these right here I'm going to cut these down these are going to be in between each of the mirrors but I want to place them all on this first so that I can see exactly where they need to go and then I'm going to cut these down to match where they need to go inside here and then I'm gonna paint them black I think I'm gonna go with black I've been just trying to decide if it's gonna be black or white I think it's gonna be black then I'm gonna transfer everything that's here once I get the right setup and I'm gonna put it on the wall and I have a glass cutter let me show you I got this from Home Depot can we see it I got the wood and this thing from Home Depot. Okay, here's the configuration that I came up with. I need to cut this mirror right there. And then I need to cut this mirror right there.
here's the layout with the with the wooden dowel pieces in and I'm just going to transfer this to the wall but unfortunately this one cracked for whatever reason when I was adding the stickers the command strips I'm probably going to get a replacement mirror and then put that up after One of my favorite stores it's um, Home Depot <laughs> it's been agreed upon that we need to put up one more strip of the black um, board across the top of the mirrors so I'm here to get one more little cube board and I'm gonna paint it black and add it onto the top of the mirrors Here's how everything looks. I just put this love sign up here. This used to be above a doorway, but I put it here. It's positioned right in the middle. And I just got these in from Amazon. And this is what they look like. It's a six pack of puck lights. They come with two remotes like this. And this is the size of them. So let's see, what is the actual size? I don't see the measurements on here. Actually, I have this right here, so let's see. It's approximately three inches in diameter. So that's where it sits on the ruler. And then the height of it is, it's about an inch high. So I have three of these and I marked the ceiling where I want them to go. I'm just gonna drill two holes so the lights come off. They have this little backing. You do need three AA batteries in there. So I'm gonna put two screws there to hold this up and then this just clicks in. It actually goes into the little sides and then turns to lock it in place. And then this is the brightness of it. 
and it changes to these colors here. Of course, this is the color that it'll probably be on at most times. And as far as I can tell, you can adjust the brightness um, using the remote. You can change the colors using the remote. And you can set a timer, 30 minute, 60 minute timer. You can make them flash. I guess it says something about smooth. So I'm gonna put these up and then I'll show you how everything looks.